Amen. So last week we um, were looking at being fruitful and then we looked at the pruning effect of being fruitful. We're looking at um, the, I think Pastor Grace was talking about, to us about the benefit of the pruning. Please put your phone on silent if you can. Sorry. We're looking at the pruning effect uh, on, on, on believers and how important it is for us to go through the seasons and the times of pruning. My brother from Dolphin, where are you? Is that you? Okay. Sorry for that miscommunication. I apologize. We'll see after the meeting. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so we want to look at a few things this evening quickly. I just want to add a little bit of my thoughts to what Pastor Grace already shared with us. And it's important to know that the, the subject matter of fruitfulness is something that is very important to God. Bearing fruit is key. How many of you know that Jesus took out time to, to give parables and then to also practicalize the issue on being on fruitfulness? How many of you are aware of that? He gave parables along those lines and then we saw him cost a fig tree that had leaves and he had an expectation of fruit from it. And by the time he went on to access it, he saw that this tree was only good for leaves, but not for fruits. And then for the first time, you see Jesus crossing what he created. Amen? Okay, he said, this tree, nobody will eat from you from today. Meaning that we must, we must prioritize fruitfulness. We must look into it deeply because before God, it matters. It matters a lot. It's important to God. It's important to him that every child of his, that everything he created bears fruit. I said to you from the beginning of, of, our, of this subject matter that even the animals and everything that God created, God intended that they should bear fruit. And the way for them to bear in fruit is that everything had its own reproductive what? System. Am I correct? Everything had its own reproductive system within it. So we are not talking about bearing fruit and you don't have the capacity, you, don't la you, don't, you lack the ability to. That was not what God did. Everything that Jesus did was, a fa was um, in innate. They all had the ability and the capacity to bear fruit. And I said to us, I only gave us one definition of being fruitful, right? I said being fruitful is not being help me now being fruitful is not being what barren I, I i heard pastor grace repeatedly said that during her teaching being fruitful means to be productive another word for fruitfulness is to be productive so jesus wants us to be productive he wants us to be a people that are very productive all right he wants us to be men and women that are productive, men and women, that when we engage a thing, it multiplies. It has a multiplier effect. It has a pull for increase. Praise the Lord. So Jesus Christ wants you and I to be productive. We must be effective in everything we are engaged in as a people. You must look at your life. Maybe you, you are a teacher. Maybe you are a nurse. Maybe you are a banker. Maybe you are a doctor. Whatever profession it is that you are engaged in, God will expect that you are productive. Amen? As a minister of the gospel, you need to be productive. There is the aspect of your life as a minister, not just an aspect, every aspect of your life. Because... Uh, ministry is spiritual. 
ministry is mental ministry is psychological ministry is sociological and i'll give you an example you know as you are seated here we needed to start thinking of how to sort out where people will park that is that is not just oh where to park appear in the name of jesus you we needed to sit down to give ourselves to mental are you getting me mental exertion we needed to exert and 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 eh, spiritually we had to take steps is that okay what is the sociological implication of what we are doing now where we we started here for the convergence sociologically we felt that look this hall is too small for convergence are you with me is somebody with me i'm talking about being productive okay this hall is small so we need to create another place to warehouse people to get to put people and not just putting them but to ensure that they are comfortable our their comfort was a priority also that also wasn't shakaba shakaba degade all right that was us planning the sociological aspect of the people that will be coming for the meeting because it's a gathering of people Am I communicating with you? So God expects that every aspect of our life be productive. He wants you to be productive in your health. He wants you to be productive. Have you heard prayers like, blessed be the fruit of your body? Are you with me? Blessed be the fruit of what? Your body. Blessed be the fruit of your your mind. Some, some people, have you, have, you, have you had meetings with people where they say, look, Rev, I just can't think straight right now. Give me some time. I, I mean, Trio will send me some messages on, Rev, we need to do this, we need to do this, and I'll tell her, well, <laughs> right now I'm blank. So give me something to work with. Are you getting me? When I say give me something to work with, I'm looking for a trigger point. Somebody say trigger point. It's not like I'm not productive, but as, as it is right now, I'm dormant. Okay, I'm incapacitated as long as as far as this matter is concerned. I, I, I don't have any idea. I don't have um I may have things inside of me, but I just need an entry point or something that can spur me up or something that can that can just um um activate my senses along that line. So it's important for us to understand that when God is talking about fruitfulness, he wants us to be productive. All right, he wants us to what to be productive now there's a reason why i'm laying this foundation in this manner you need to look at your life as a christian god wants you to be productive spiritually i think it was about some two three years ago i know that about close to 18 years now or 14 18 because we're like two years after my 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 work with god that god gave me that instruction and he said wait on me for every november and i'll speak to you concerning your following year i said okay lord and since then, I was doing that every year, you know. And two years ago, I just felt, come on now, I'm an irresponsible guy. How can God tell me this to do 30 days of waiting on him once a month, once a year, every, every November? And I just felt within me, not that the Lord spoke to me, I just felt within me, ha -ha, close to 18 years now, I'm doing this thing one, one month. Have I, am I showing that I've grown? Do you understand this? Am I even showing that I've grown? You know what, Lord? I'll be, I'll be doing this now from now till January. So from November, I moved it to 90 days. I did personally. And, but before I, I started, I had to speak to my spiritual father. Accountability. I remember one of those days I was doing it. He called me and said, oh, I said, sir, said, are you at home? I said, he said, break the fast now. Break it now. One of those years, I, I think a year ago or so. And I don't know why. He said, break that fast now right and i broke the fast the moment i broke the fast i was seriously ill so he saw it before me i was seriously ill okay but in your growth what i'm saying is in your growth productivity is key every aspect of your life as i'm talking right now look at your life god is not against you being productive in your workplace in fact God is not against you taking on courses that you feel are relevant to your profession, relevant to your career, and your, your organization is not sending you for that training. And you are saying, well, if they are not sending me for that training, so be it. 
For example, you need to keep improving yourself as, as a musician. Is that not so? You need to keep, you, you need to keep acquiring more knowledge. If, if you are a lawyer and you are not improving on your law, the pace and the movement of law right now, I don't know how it is in Nigeria, but I mean abroad. Some of you, when you go to abroad, when you travel, you will be running to catch up. And that's because you've decided to study your law within the ambit of Nigeria. If you help me, say amen. amen. So, your ability to break out of the norm, break out of the system and the tradition and the culture, the mode where you are, it's key if you must be productive. Now, I'm, zero, I'm, I'm stepping down that word into our career lanes, into, into the, 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 the mundane things we do from time to time. And then, God also expects you to, to be very productive in your spiritual work with him. Which areas must I be productive? Number one, soul winning. You should be able to win souls. We must be productive in winning souls. We must be productive as soul winners. We must, we must prioritize winning souls more than any other thing. Praise the Lord. Rev, come, to, come and sit. Come and sit. Uh, your, your seat is there. Close to Pastor Grace. Welcome, sir. Amen? Amen. So, we must, we must be so winners. Okay? Which area, again, do I expect to be productive? I need to be productive in my body. I need to be productive in my body. Are you with me? You need to be productive in your body because God wants you to give birth to godly seeds. So, when God wants you to give birth to godly seed, he gives scriptures like, none shall be barren among you. In fact, none shall cast their young because fruitfulness is key to him. In fact, God, God expects, mm, which area again should I be productive? The land where he planted me must be productive. The land where I am, what? Planted must be productive. Just get all of this because when I begin to take you to those scriptures, we'll just run. The land. The land. Where God has planted you. If Lagos, if God sent you to Lagos, Lagos must be productive for you. I can't hear an amen. amen. If God sent you here. You know, I was talking to Papa a few days ago. We we're talking. And he said, say congratulations to all the pastors for me. And congratulations to RC and Lagos. Indeed, you guys have made full proof of your calling. It means that we are not only productive as a people, the land, we are also accessing the productivity of the land. You know, I hope you know that it is now, some people will say that this is, it is now that we know that there is RCN. Before they will say, I beg, don't take them serious. They are just, that's why they are talking the way they are talking. Are, are you getting me? The land wherein must be productive. That is why Jesus said, God was saying to them, look, I will take you to a land. Are you with me? Yes, that flows with what? Milk and honey. In that land, when you get in there, there is fruitfulness. Can you hold the hand of your neighbor and prophesy on him that your land will be fruitful? Everyone online, open your mouth and pray that your land, when you, you are, where, where the Lord has planted you, will be fruitful every aspect if you are if you are if you are in Oshobo if you are in Obomosho if you are in Obomosho if you are in Ibadan if you are in Kano if wherever you are planted you will be fruitful your land will be fruitful wherever whoever whatever and wherever you are planted Whoever is with you, whatever that you do, will be fruitful. Your land will be fruitful. Your cities will be fruitful. There will be no barrenness around you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every aspect of your life shall be fruitful. Every aspect of your life shall be fruitful. Mapokredia Sante Labaradia. Oh, you shall be fruitful. In Jesus mighty name we pray and this is why i want to seize the opportunity to talk to you to speak to your body right now it doesn't matter what satan has said you will not have children it's a lie 
It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the enemy has said that you have cancer in your body is a lie. It doesn't matter. You have cancer lump on your breast. It's a lie. Every aspect of your body should be and will be fruitful. So put your hands on your body and command it. Body be fruitful. Every aspect of my body be fruitful. I decree over you be fruitful. From now henceforth be ye fruitful in the name of Jesus. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. My mind mentally I'm fruitful. My soul is fruitful. Is fruitful in God. I'm tethered to be fruitful. I am tethered to be fruitful. I am tethered to be fruitful. I am fruitful. In the name of Jesus, I am fruitful. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. So, what does it mean to be fruitful again? Okay, Uncle Toby, help me on that keyboard now. No, stay there. I mean, sorry, I know I'm distracting you. You are writing too. What does it mean to be fruitful? It means to yield benefits. To yield what? Benefits. To yield results. Increase and benefits. It's very easy to invest into people that you know that they are productive. Is that not so? It's very easy. If, if somebody comes to me with a, a business idea now, there are people that will come to me with businesses I will not bulge because yeah, there's increase, there's there's productivity, there's 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 there is there is there is there are yields, yielding of fruits. You 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 have you have the ability to yield fruits, and you see this ability to yield fruit. Um, let's settle it once and for all. Let me say this: you know, in God's infinite mercy, He wants all of us to bear fruits. The standard of bearing fruit in the kingdom, the, the, the standard is the same, but the yieldedness is what is the problem. But God has never changed his mind. God has never downplayed one to say that, the, the, I mean, God has never downplayed one because of the other. That's it. Okay? Every one of us have the capacity to bear fruit. It's innate. Help me tell your neighbor, you have it inside. Help me turn to another neighbor. Tell him you have it inside. Tell to another person. Tell him you have it inside. You can bear fruits. Look at somebody else. Tell him you can bear fruits. Tell our members online. You can bear fruits. Every one of us has the requisite knowledge. Deposits of God to bear fruit. However in our bearing of fruits there are things that are required there are processes that God will put in place and that process or processes as I will begin to itemize them are in the scriptures one is pruning I was looking for how to bring a plant today I was really looking for how to carry a plant and bring into this facility and then bring some pruning hook. If God permits, maybe next week. But pruning has to do with cutting. Cutting to shape. Praise the Lord. Pastor Abe saw me last week. On Thursday last week, outside, and say, "Ah, Revo, this is your face is is cut out." He said, "I need to trim my face." I say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, I know. I need to cut my hair." I be pass The way I was looking, it was Austin, but not the real Austin that he's used to. This Austin that he's seen, the face is scattered. Okay, not because I was boning, even though part of it was I was frowning. But outside the frowning, every part of my face had this unwanted hair. Is that okay? So he said, Ah, Revo, ah, tomorrow I'm meeting. Ah, I said, No, nah, my, my baba will cut it tomorrow. Okay? Now, when I cut my hair, what happens? Speak to me. I look what? Say it. My wife will not be angry. 
I look what? I look finer. That's what happens when you are trimmed. Is somebody getting me? When you allow God to prune you, you become finer. Don't forget. When you allow Jesus to trim you, you become finer. Pastor Victor, here is the danger. It's either you are open to being pruned or you are being cut away and thrown away. The thing is, there must be a cutting. So, either God cuts you to size and to shape. Brother, where you boss out from? Where's your wife? Stand up. Stand up. Where's your wife? She's pregnant. She's at work. Now you come fat like this. It's good to be married. But this is your marriage that took you away from RC and Sha. She's well off. That's the beauty of this hall. Everybody that is entering, I'm seeing them. <laughs> That's why I enter anywhere. I'm seeing you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So including escorts that will be coming late. We'll be knowing ourselves. Praise God. It's good to have our place. If it's, I'm so calm. If I reach one place, we close, we go home. I can say we will extend this training for the next three days. <laughs> But swipe is that also. <laughs> That's why this place is good. Amen. Jidez, today you are appearing. I need to suspend you completely. After you say I'm your, you am your father. Father with son, son that is bigger than father. Hmm? He wasn't here last week. I didn't see him. I didn't see him now. He ran away. See my daughter there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Online, we're enjoying ourselves, okay? <laughs> I love you all too. Very soon, we'll be putting you on the screen and we'll be addressing you. Yes, yeah, Sister Labake, how far? Tell us something. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So, so either way, God will have to do something. He said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. My father is the dresser. He's, he's the he's a vine dresser. Praise the Lord. So in God's dressing you, God dressing you means that he will hold, I think the right, sequel is the right word. Sequel. He will hold the sequel and he will begin to, have you seen gardeners before? You see where gardeners function? If you have flowers at home, the flowers are growing out of shoot you know and sometimes you have leaves or you have shrubs you will need to cut off those shrubs all right it's when you cut off those shrubs as you cut off those shrubs finer ones will be coming out oh if you are in developed countries where they are waiting for summer where they are waiting for winter and you begin to see flowers fall away and all of that and then people begin to come in and 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 how many of you know the map of canada how many of you have seen the map of canada there's a leaf like that actually in Canada, I don't know if, there, if you can find it any other way, any other place. When we went to Canada that, 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 um, in November, most of those leaves were already falling off, had fallen off on the floor, on the ground, on the street, and all of that. Praise the Lord! But when it's at some point, you now begin to come into those trees that were looking dry, and then life will suddenly come on it. Is that okay? So God expects that. You, you as a person we open up your life to him because the more he trims you the better you become the more he trims you the more productive you become the more he trims you the finer you become so God trims you so that you can bear much fruit is that okay God works on your character so that you can become a finer person and I, I illustrated by when, when you see a lady for example um, these days they have makeup, amen, and they have what makeover. All right, the makeup can make them look exactly the way they are, 
just simple not too harsh and then there is complete makeover when they will put eyelashes that will look like one kilometer and then their eyes will be like are you looking at me really and all of that praise the lord so but it's 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 um the pruning the pruning processes of the father to the son or to the daughter is to enhance productivity so he said as a wine dresser one of the things he does to you and i is to constantly dress us and the way god dresses us is by addressing the issues in our lives did you hear what i said the way god dresses us as a wine dresser as a vine dresser is to what address the things in our lives address our character address our thought pattern address the way we do things it's the way he addresses those things that are the pruning process amen god can decide to begin to address you as a single lady that the way you talk like this it will be difficult to sustain marriage that your mouth is too sharp and then he would now give you an instruction that when you are with your colleagues and your your, your friends as they are talking keep quiet the thing will be coming up like this it will rise but you already know that you have an instruction to keep quiet. As you keep yielding to it, a time comes that everybody shouts and they say, what happened, Auntie Grace? You cannot even talk. He said, hmm. All is well. It's because you are beginning to gain mastery of that area of your life. Praise the Lord. Amen? You know, when I came to Lagos, I'm a very spendthrift. I was a very spendthrift person. Very spendthrift person. I, if I see things, I'll just buy. The ones I need and the ones I don't need. The ones I will buy and just keep in the house. And after three weeks, I'll pick it myself and throw it away. Okay? But, the Lord began to call my attention to it. And I began to work on it. Because I noticed that ah, things just catch my fancy easily. So what did I do? I'll just see, I'll wind down and say, I know they buy. So I was picking out and then when people bring things to me or when they market things to me online i'll just tell them that oh this is not within my budget not because i'm stingy all right so even people here have done done it with me and i'll say no 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 no. this now is not within my budget i have no plan to buy this but before i will buy it out of not pity just out of i don't want the person to feel bad but i really don't need it So when God began to point my attention to it, and you know the way God pointed my attention to it, He said, look, you have children. Oh. If these kids should grow like this, will you be happy? I said, oh, no, I won't be happy. He said, so change it. Was it easy? No, it wasn't. But I had to give myself to the process. So you must give yourself to the process of bearing fruit. Help me preach to your neighbor again. You will have to give yourself to the process of bearing fruit so bearing fruit is the ability to be productive is the ability to yield benefits he said i am the true vine and my father is a husband man every branch in me that beareth not fruit he take it away you see that if you have a tree here with leaves and you see that one of the leaves is drying up what do you do talk to me now church you know we have online audience let them hear your voice what do you do to it? You cut it away, right? Now, when you see a tree whose leaf is dry, what do you do to it? What do you do to it? <laughs> you are just being mischievous. The answer is the same. When you see a tree whose leaf is dry, what do you do to the dry leaf? You cut it away. Abi, Pastor Victor, now you study a Greek. When you see a tree and the leaf is dry, what do you do to the leaf? You cut it off. In cutting it off, right? That's one. You've cut it away. When you see a tree and you want it to bear more fruit, what do you do to it? You water it. Eh? 
Mona, wait. Give me, give Pastor Victor another mic. He's an, he's, he read a Greek. He, he spent five years in school. So he's a, he's a, he's a, he's an authority on that matter more than all of you. What do we do to it? If, to make it more productive, we prune. We cut out the excess branches. We cut out the excess branches, yeah. even though it's leafy. Yeah, we cut it. We cut you you leaves. cut it. Yes. Then if you see a branch that is dry what do you do to it again cut it as well so there is one constant cut. there is a cutting away that's all i want you to see pastor grace be be productive there will be a cutting away <laughs> be unfruitful there will be a cutting away just like live your life well you will go to heaven are you with me don't live your life well you will go to hell but there is a gateway to this two. Is what? Death. So whether you are righteous or not, you will die. You are not with me. You don't like this, my gospel, this morning. There is one gateway to either heaven or hell. That gateway is called what? Death. There is one gateway to being fruitful. That gateway is called pruning. But that pruning is cutting. But when you now look at that word, okay, that word that was used here as pruning is another word, what? Purge. Are you with me? The, the rendition in the New Testament is what? Is to purge. That, that purging is sanctification. That purging is separation that purging it's a process and without the purging of god you will not be able to work with him so he began to itemize how these purgings will take place if you help me say amen this is your mic pastor Ope. i feel like pulling it out praise the lord <laughs> so okay give me psalm 126 5 and 6 we'll come back to this place Psalm 126 5 and 6 they that sow in tears shall reap in joy 6 he, he that goeth forth and weepeth bearing what? precious seed shall doubtless come again with what? rejoicing bringing his what? his shoes with him are you getting me now you you sow in tears when this when this pruning is happening it makes you cry have you seen when 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 you know it's because you are trimming you are trimming leaves so you don't know when they are crying they are not they are not human beings but they are living things because they have the ability to grow more. So, when, when you look at scriptures like this, and God is working on you, you are sowing in what? Tears. It's a painful process. It's a painful process at the beginning, but at the long run, you become better for it. Because, if you are supposed to go vertical, and your bearing fruit is in your going vertical, okay is this horizontal i beg your pardon Hor huh? this is vertical okay and then rather than going vertical your growth is going horizontal and god is saying the only way to make this tree bear more fruit is by me cutting off these excesses there are excesses around us that god will have to cut that is what it means to sow in tears you are you are i mean pastor siri said something over the week that was very touching about a, a fellow um colleague of his that could not afford to buy a car not because he couldn't but because every time he earned salary god keeps saying to him give it out there is a missionary here send that money there is this person there send that money it happened to me in rc in lagos so those days when I go out, those were the days that everywhere I went to, they say, you are an irresponsible man if you don't have savings. Ah! You say you are doing business, 
you, you don't have any savings. And then I'll look at my wife. My wife is working too. We actually don't have savings. Because RCM was everything that was in our head. Eh? Rev. Do you understand? You will just be looking at your life like you are wasting. And then at some point you will say, I have children. I have three. Plus my wife. If I remember one day I looked at her, I said, see, you deserve good clothes at least. Minimum requirement. You even deserve to wear good clothes. So please, take this amount, go and buy. Because it wasn't, me I was even wearing, but she, no way, you know. You know, when you're a pastor, it's you that they see. Now you that they give gift pass. They don't even know your wife. Say amen. And I'm not soliciting for you to give to her. That's not what this is about. Okay? But that's just what it is. For example, I had to forgo my birthday for hers. Because I noticed during birthday, ah, uh-uh, everybody's ah, uh, thank God for P. Austin, thank God for Pastor Austin, thank God on, on RCM platform. I just woke up and I told myself, if you want peace in your home, <laughs> as a wise man, seed your birthday quickly. So I came to that platform and I changed it. I said, look, please, celebrate the woman. Because the issue now is, she's my birthday mate. So everybody is, thank God for Reverend Austin, oh, thank God for his being a blessing. And then, and the woman is just there. Are you saying she's not productive? Ah, so stop it. Let all the accolades and all the praises go to her. Okay? But you see, in the accolade and the praises going to her, she will also have to prove herself and her worth among the people. If you help me say amen. So it doesn't have to be a super imposition. It has to be, do, have you earned it? Do you deserve it? And her deserving of it is her, what? Productivity quotient amongst the people. If you help me say amen. So you can impose people on people. You can impose a leader on people. You can impose a leader on Nigeria. It doesn't mean that the people like the person. If you help me say amen. Are you with me? <laughs> You will just be looking and be saying, let four years come and go. And if we have to endure this for another four years, we will just endure. But it doesn't mean that we really like you. If you help me, say amen. amen. So, so you will go through this process. You will bear. You will, you will go forth weeping, bearing what? Precious seed. That your seed is precious because God is with you. So you keep sowing, but you will doublessly come again with what? Rejoicing. You will come with, again with what? Sheaves. If you help me, say amen. amen. So the pruning system is to make you better. The pruning system of heaven is to make you good. All right, let's go to... We already are aware that Jesus expects expect returns on his investment. So quickly... Let's go to Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 21, 23 to 43. It's a long read. I want scriptures to wash us today. 23 to 43. A long read. 21. And when he was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? So by what authority? And who gave you this authority to do these things? Let's go on. And Jesus answered and said unto, unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which, if you tell me, I in likewise will tell you by what authority I'll do these things. The baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or of man? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did ye not, why did ye not then believe him? But if we shall say of men, We fear the people, For all, what? For all hold what? John as a prophet. Let's go on. And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither I tell you by what authority I do these things. Let's go on. By what, but what think ye? A certain man had two sons. Look at where we are talking from, oh. Reverend John. Look at where we are talking from. But 
something is about to bust out now. We are talking of by what and by who. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go, go walk today in my please help me mark the word walk because I'll come back to it later. Fruitfulness, there are gateways to being fruitful. One of it is work. So I'll come to that later. He said, and he answered and said, I will not, but afterward he repented and went. May some of you repent. <laughs> May some of you repent. <laughs> May some of you repent. God is saying you should go to his vineyard and walk. Right now you are not walking. You, are, you, are. <laughs> you know the question here, the probe is on authority. I would have started my reading from this parable, but I took you from there. The probe is on authority. It was this probe on authority that necessitated this utterance. So it is better to pick it from there because you will see that there is a, a correlation between your authority quotient in the kingdom and your being fruitful. Are you, are you with me? Is my class boring? No, eh? No, Abi, you want the fiery Austin? Okay. So he answered and said, I will not, but afterward repented and went. How many people will repent here today and say, Lord, I will no longer be jobless in the kingdom? I will have a job. I will have, I will have work for you. Some of you, the problem today is your job. Some of you is even marriage. The reason why you are not working in the vineyard again is marriage. Why have you not been around? Ah, Rev, <laughs> it is well, oh, it is this my my baby. It is this child that I have. I was talking to one recently. He said, ah, Rev, <laughs> my husband is not in town, so I cannot drive. I said, you can't drive? She said, yes. And you can't take transport? She said, hmm, my husband doesn't like me taking transport. He said, go to the... He said to my son, hey, he said he has what? <laughs> and I've told you, one of the anatomy of the believer is what? One of the anatomy of the believer is what? Sonship. He said to his two sons, he said, go and walk in my vineyard, in my vineyard. And we've done Isaiah chapter 5. A song of my well-beloved. And what? My vineyard. Okay? So you see that when we talk about the vineyard, we are talking about the geography of the kingdom. Somebody said the geography of the kingdom. It's a geography of the kingdom. The entire landscape of the earth is what God has given to us to do ministry. The landscape of the earth is our vineyard. Are you with me? What's the vineyard of the Christian? The earth. The landscape of the world. That's why when I, when I speak to you here, I say, look, Lagos is your launching pad, but the world is your parish. Help me tell your neighbor, Lagos is your launching pad but the world is your parish and you see whether you believe it or not covid has been able to squeeze the world into a global village people are listening to me now from america people are listening to me from australia people are listening to me from what have you wherever okay people are listening to us from england right now the world has been squeezed into one place and so he said I will not, but afterward he repented. May some of us repent today. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. And, I, and I'm praying this prayer from the depth of my heart. Okay? You need to repent truly. That you have not been walking in the vineyard of the Lord. You have been walking in your own vineyard. But the vineyard of the Lord is lacking. Have you, do you remember? Is it Lamentation or the Songs of Solomon? He said he left his own field. And he ran after the field of others. But when God was going to make the man and lay the man on him, God was going to lay the man on his own vineyard that he left. Every one of us here have a vineyard that has been willed to us by God. Is that okay? You see, we, we, we just resumed RCN here. 
and it took nine years i don't know how many years it was that esther joined rcn but it took about seven years or eight years or six years or, or five years of waiting for us to be able to have what we call a toilet a convenience that is to our name then the ministry of somebody kicked in she had received that instruction for me that was very powerful she, has, she had received that instruction for many years ago but she can't just go to excellence hotel and tell them um, um i received this on behalf of rcn i'll be cleaning with them i'll be cleaning this place for you people she couldn't just go to um no academy in the one before academy in. she couldn't just go to boat house to say that okay guys i i i mean i know she couldn't go to academy in but the moment we entered this place and i was teaching and i said there are some of us that god will give that burden i didn't know there was somebody here with that burden and what an excellent job they did during the convergence nowhere was smelling can we clap our hands for sanctuary cleaners so he said he said to two of his sons, to one of the sons, not the two of them, to one of the sons, like God will be looking at you now to say, one of you, one of you, one of you. I'm not talking cleaning. No, 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 no. And I'm not, you know, you know, you are, are you part of the sons of the kingdom? Part of the sons of the kingdom. Can I get a high yes? yes. Okay. If you are part of the kingdom, God is giving this illustration regarding you and I. And but what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work, go work today in my vineyard. The father has a vineyard, and he said to one of the sons, Go and work. Pastor Abbe, let's go on now, speedily. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. And he went not. I komalati. Marada akabra dia tuanke. Maradia. I go. These are the ones that have zeal. When they are talking before you finish, say, Sir, I'll fix it. Don't sleep, oh. They don't do what you instruct. They do what to evangelate. This ones. They can easily ch change their mind. Their passion is at the spur of the moment. They are excited, but they are not available. Are you getting me? They are excited, they are not available. There are people you give something to say, ah, this one is son of this house. You go and sleep. There are some where you give it to them, double check. I know the ones I give things here and I will sleep. I know. I know departments that I'm solid. I know prayer cell, I know prayer cell centers that are doing their own agenda. I know. It is not that they are just. And you know now that you are growing, now that it's evident that may the Lord give RC and Lagos discernment. You, if you are not a wicked person, shout louder. Because we need that prayer more than ever before. You will see people who will be coming here now to say, God said I should fold my pastoral work and follow you. God said I should stop what I'm doing. This is my church. God said I should stop it and follow you. The first lead must test is to tell him, okay, no problem. Come and follow us. That church. You say God said you should stop the church. You say, all right, come and sit in RC and Lagos. Pastor Victor, deploy somebody there to go and be the pastor. You give that person two weeks, you won't see him again. And Litmus, are you, are you with me? So, he said, I will go! But later on, <laughs> he went not. Let's read on, Pastor Abi. Whether of them, whether of them to indeed the will of his father, they said unto him, the first, Jesus said unto them, verily I say unto you, that the publican and the harlot go into the kingdom of God. What? Before you. Let's read on. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believe what? Him not. But the publican and the harlot believed him. And ye, when he had seen it, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward, 
that ye might believe him. Let's go on. Where are we reading on to? Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard. I told you that the issue of fruitfulness is serious. Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it. Is this not familiar to you? Isaiah chapter 5. And hedged it round about. So this is fence. Okay? And did a wine press in it. You remember Isaiah chapter 5? There was wine press in it. Hmm. And built a tower. Are you, are you getting this? Is, are, you, are you remembering now? Are you getting it now? And then he built a tower. And let what? And let it out what? To the husband man. And went into a far country. He believed that as you are now, Pastor Grace, he has given you the Holy Ghost. He believed that as you are now, he's interceding for you at the right hand of the Father. Okay? He believes that as you are now, he has brought protective edge around you. All is for one goal. Oh. Then when he was done, he traveled to a far country. Is Jesus not in a far country now? Let's respond. He's in a far country. At the same time, he's not in a far country. He's seated with the Father, but he made a deposit in you. And that deposit is what? The wine press. What is the wine press? The Holy Ghost. What is the wine press? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is in your inside. So he has gone to sit down. That I have I'm, I've done all I should do. Let me sit down. Let's go on, sir. And when the fruit fruit drew near, another anatomy of the believer shows forth. Because there is a place of sonship. The place of sonship is a place of authority. Another anatomy shows up. The place of sonship is a place of authority. If you want to do, if you want to understand my authority capacity, ask my father. I'm his son. Are you with me? Are you with me? But when it comes to productivity, when it comes to bearing fruit, you will do that as a servant. You will, you will, you will, you will serve. You will use the gift that is in your inside to serve. You will serve your generation. You will serve sinners. You will serve sinners. You can be preaching to a sinner and he say, get out of this place, you stupid man. You cannot tell him you are a foolish boy, idiot. You can't do that. You will serve him and say, okay, sir, it's okay. Is somebody getting me? How many of you are used to this ultra that say your customer is always right? But you know it takes a lot of dilemma, even for a non-believer. Say so which customer is always right? Are you... Praise the Lord. So, so, and when the time of please help me say expectation, he went to a far country, but there was an expectation. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servant to the husband man that he might receive what? the fruits of it. So what are the pruning processes that God put in place here? The pruning processes is number one. God checked you in. God hedged you in. He protected you. Okay? What's the pruning process that God puts in place? God released a wine what? A wine press inside of you. What else did God put in that place? He put a tower. What's the symbol of the tower I said to you the other time? Alarm. Intercession. Blowing the alarm to let you know there is danger. If you help me, say amen. God put all of these things and then he now said he's expecting what? He's expecting fruits. How come then we don't want God to process us? And how come we are offended when God is expecting fruit from our lives? <laughs> I was with um, one of our guys came to, to see us last night with his wife. And my wife said, you always know how to think about your life. And think and think. When he thinks about where he is now. When he thinks about, oh, this is, I'm supposed to be here by now. And I'm not there yet. Praise the Lord. I'm supposed to be at so, so and so place. I'm not there yet. And then he begins to feel somehow. And then right now, his life is like, 
when you hear him talk nice as if you are going to be jealous everything is just falling in place that was because at some point he opened his life to the pruning processes of the lord i remember some some 2018 2019 i don't know if it was 2019 he was living in our house and i said to him i see you in canada i see god moving you out of nigeria to canada and you know every time every time some things like this happen you always want to work it out by flesh and myself and him we humped into the prophecy man i began to see how i can assist that that my trying to assist was what caused trouble between me and him because i went by the flesh he also jumped in by the flesh since his father was trying to help we ended in a ditch but today as i speak to you they are on their way now he's not even going he's going to go with his wife am i communicating with you but when the pruning process was going on it didn't make any sense It didn't make any sense. So God will prune you so that you can bear more, more fruit. And if you refuse for the pruning, he cuts you off and throws you away. Praise the Lord. So let's go to, let's quickly check. Um, Pastor Abe, give me Amplified Classic back to John 15. Amplified Classic, quickly. I am okay i am the i am the true vine and my father is what the vine dresser let's go on any branch in me that does not bear fruit that stops bearing may we not stop may we not get to this place and say lord we are we now have a place we will stop bearing fruit now is the time to bear fruits help me tell your neighbor now is the time <coughs> to bear fruits that stops bearing he cuts away, trims off, takes away, and he cleanses and repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit to make it bear more. And what? And more? So you just become finer. You keep just bearing. And last week, my wife was giving, <laughs> when she was talking, I said, don't go there, don't go there. And she said, she has a farm, a pig farm. And there was this animal that she has. The animal has been eating. Eating all. Oh. And she's been expecting what? Piglets. Instead of piglets, she was experiencing more consumption. She was just experiencing more consumption. That thing was just eating and eating and eating. It's even better to give back to one so that they will say that we, there is hope. Oh. And so what she decided to do was to unpack that pig. And she sell it. I mean, she sold it. That's what happens to many Christians. God just looks at you and the way he cuts you off is just pack you aside. What's the implication of God dumping you aside? It means you no longer have access to current emphasis of God regarding your life, regarding your economy. You will paddle your canoe yourself. God will no longer be happy. God will no longer be pleased. God will no longer be proud because every aspect of your life is not yielding fruit so he said one of the things he wants is he wants more excellent fruit so in that their pig whatever that they do you will discover that when the pig is going to give birth now the pig will start by maybe two or three the next time the pig will do six the next time the thing just keep going there are people who who, who are into dog business you rejoice when the dog is pregnant. Your rejoicing increases when the dog gives birth to like four, five, six, because you'll be calculating one is 200k. By the time I say five, I have 1.2 million. But if you think give birth to one, when we call you, we'll say, How far? Say, Rev, I beg, I beg. As big as that tummy was, 
now only one that is not is not a more excellent fruit are you getting me you are not with me not a more excellent fruit god wants us to generate fruits you know it was as i as i began to study this matter that the reality of the enormity of what is ahead of us began to dawn on me we need to see new faces in church again we need to see new faces in church we are doing a lot of recycling